Welcome to this recording about encapsulation in object-oriented programming. My name is Tobias Olsson and this work is licensed under the Creative Commons Attribution Share Alike. Encapsulation is quite a wide topic and it doesn't only include object-oriented systems. You should think about encapsulation in every type of system you do and every type of implementation language. In object-oriented systems, uh, we think of encapsulation maybe firstly as the unity of data and behavior in, in one, one part, so to speak, and this is the object as defined by a class. But we can also think at higher levels, for example, encapsulations in packages, uh, encapsulation in modules, components or libraries, and ultimately encapsulation in services, so that the service encapsulates some behavior and some data for that behavior. The first thing that comes to mind and at a quite low level of object-oriented programming is information hiding. And this means that objects should not be able to access the internal information of other objects, especially if those objects are of another type. Uh, in the programming languages, we often have different levels of uh, information hiding. So we can define things as attributes or operations as public, and this means that everyone uh, outside of this uh, class can access uh, the attribute or operation. Basically, this defines the public signature of the class and the default is that uh, you should never have attributes as public, but they should be protected or private. Uh, however, you will need to have some operations public or the uh, object will be quite useless in uh, the system because you cannot do anything with it. The next level of information hiding is to use uh, protected attributes or operations. And this means that subclasses to uh, the parent class have access to these attributes or operations. And this can be good if you have some attribute or some operation that you need to call from a subclass. And then you can use the protected uh, keyword. The highest level of protection is private, then only objects of the same type have, have access to uh, the attribute or operation. So basically this means that you uh, can only access these attributes or operations from within the same class. So when you code, you can only uh, access in the same file uh, in Java. Java has also has another level and that's package protection. Uh, this is uh, not always avail available in all object-oriented programming languages, but basically it means that everything uh, that is defined in the same package has access to the attributes or operations. And this can be a very nice thing because you can also have uh, package protection on the classes themselves in Java. So outside uh, of the package, you cannot use certain classes and this can make it easier to encapsulate uh, the classes in a module or a package or a component and make it easier for the user of the this uh, this package because they know that okay these classes are package protected so I'm, I'm not uh, I, I don't need to worry about them the restrictions are enforced by the compiler and it's part of the class definition so when you design your class and you make things public, protected, or private, you make some design decisions. One thing, one thing to remember is that you often handle objects as references, and this is something that can easily break encapsulation. And we will take a look at an example of this uh, in this recording. Encapsulation can also mean that we encapsulate some type of responsibility. So uh, we can hide the actual implementation of something from the clients using uh, this behavior that they want and typically we use interfaces to remove the implementation details from the client so we encapsulate the responsibility maybe rather than uh, just information hiding so encap encapsulation is a broad topic uh, we will take a look at it from an object oriented perspective and especially when you define your classes we can think of an example here uh, we can imagine that we are going to implement a person class and this person has a first name and a last name. The uh, first type of implementation that maybe comes to mind is to use this first name and last name as simple strings and add them as an attribute in this person class. 
And that could be fine if there's no limitation of, on what the name actually is. So we don't have anything in our system that, that depends on that the name have a particular format or length or something like that. In this case, we do make some assumptions that, well, you cannot have an, a name that is uh, empty, for example, or it must be at least two characters long or something like that. So if we use the names, uh, first name and last name as simple strings, we need to add a lot of validation code in our person class. And this is not really related to a person. It's related to a name. So this behavior of name validation should not really be in the person class. So the person class becomes bloated and maybe the, these names are also used elsewhere in our system. So uh, having them as strings uh, does not make sense. We can have a lot of invalid names floating around as arguments and things like that. And we need to add this validation all over the place for things to work uh, as they should. The uh, solution is to create a name class instead of uh, having everything in the person class or uh, in other parts of the system also. And we can use this name class then to handle the validation in a central place. And we can reuse this name in, in other parts of the system and send the name object then instead of these uh, name strings. In this name class, we add a get and a set for accessing the string representation uh, and they accept and returns a string. And this is fine because strings are immutable in Java. So returning the string does, uh, does, uh, does not expose the name object to any vulnerabilities, so to speak. You cannot change this string that you get uh, and uh, the name inside the, and the string inside the name class becomes changed. Uh, in the person class, we use get first name and set first name, get last name and set last name. Uh, we could have some validation in the uh, person class also. For example, we could decide that you cannot have the same first and last name. So this is the type of validation that you cannot have in the name, but rather this is a responsibility of a person because a person cannot have the same first name and last name. Uh, so the interesting thing now becomes what should we return and accept as arguments to the getters and setters? First uh, problem is what should we return? So if we return the internal name object, this is a reference to the name object. And then we can directly manipulate the name that we get. So someone outside of the person can uh, call set on the name object uh, and the name of the person will change. And this, uh, and this violates the encapsulation principle. You should not be able to change the name of, of the person without involving the person object itself. Uh, in this case, you can set the first name to be equal to the last name by getting the name and setting the string in the name object itself. And this will change the name of the person object to something that is then invalid. So uh, that's of course not good. And this can also be confusing for your fellow uh, developers, the users of your uh, neat person class. They don't really know if they should use get name and then use the setter of the name to change the name or if they should use the set name, set first name on the person class. You have kind of like two ways to do the same thing here. Uh, the solution is then to not return a reference to the internal name object because that opens us up for mistakes and it open, opens up for confusion. Uh, in Java, just returning the name as a string would actually work quite well because the uh, strings are immutable in Java. But maybe we have some other type of situation uh, where we have yet another object, so to speak. Uh, so uh, maybe we should return some abstraction that does not expose what the us users of the class should not be able to do. So for example, we maybe have a special class that's an immutable name in this case. Uh, that does not have the set method for, uh, for the name defined at all. So if you get the name, you get another type of uh, name object and it's an object that does not expose the set uh, operation on the name. 
The third solution is to return a copy instead of a reference. Uh, that is, you make a copy of the name and you return that copy instead of the reference to the internal object. In this way, if the user uses the set operation on the name, it's this new object's name that is changed and not the object that is in the person. Uh, in this way, we at least have uh, encapsulation maintained and we cannot manipulate the names without involving the person object. Uh, it is, however, still maybe a little bit confusing for users because maybe they assume that they can get the name and they can change it and they assume that the person's name should be changed but then again nothing happens because it's just the copy that it's changed. So what should we use as the set argument? Uh, so we have this set first name, what should the argument be there? Should the type be a string? Uh, sending a string in in this set name first name thing is uh, maybe not the best thing because then the string can be invalid and we need to handle those errors anyway. Uh, maybe we could argue that we do need to have some error handling uh, for checking that the name, first name and last name are not equal and uh, there is some type of error handling in set first name anyway but uh, we need to handle the errors for having an invalid string or a, a, a too short of a name so to speak also then in set first name but uh, and and this means it could be a little bit nicer to have the validation as close as possible to the source so if you in your user interface input the name somewhere uh, it is nice to maybe have the validation for the name as early as possible and not need to create a, a, a full person object to get the uh, error messages. Uh, another option is then of course to send in a name object. Uh, this is also something that you can uh, make small mistakes about because if you send in an object it's a reference to the name object the someone else has created and just assigning that to your uh, internal variable in the person class means that you are sharing this object outside of the borders of the person object and if anyone manipulates the uh, inserted injected name object the name of the person will also be changed uh, so in this case I think the best solution is to use a name object but make sure that the internal object inside the person is a copy of the object that you send in so you don't have these shared references floating around. This leads us to an exercise. Uh, try to implement some of the problematic situations uh, as uh, I have described. Uh, you create the person and the name classes. Uh, you can of course make some simpl simplification for example use a valid name as default in a person so that you have something to work with and instead of uh, having advanced error handling you can just ignore the change of, of the name for example uh, in in reality maybe throwing exceptions would be the uh, best solution uh, and the goal is for you to ask uh, an outside programmer to the person class try to set the name uh, of the person to an invalid state for example set the name to something that is shorter than two characters uh, the first name or the last name or set the first name and last name to the same uh, strings and this could indicate also an error situation. Uh, you should of course use the, the methods that you have in person and name to try to do this and also try to implement the encapsulated design. So try to do this as, uh, as described with the solution solutions described also for the problems and try to find some loophole where you can shape, manipulate the name of a person and set it to an invalid state uh, or is the, are the solutions good enough for handling this. As a summary I think the important thing here to take home is that you should make it easy to do the right thing. Uh, in Swedish it sounds a little bit better. Det ska vara lätt att göra rätt. So for anyone using the classes that you designed, you, it should be easy to do the right thing as a user. So even if this user is 
yourself maybe in two or five or six months uh, it, it should be easy to do the right thing it shouldn't be easy to uh, get objects into a, a state that is uh, not good for them optimally we have uh, only operations available so that we can not make any mistakes so if I'm not supposed to be able to set the name of a person in certain ways there is simply no way to do this in, in the code. Uh, try to assume stupidity. So uh, this includes your own stupidity when you revisit your code. So make it easy for the users of your classes. And this also ties into Murphy's law. If you have ways that things can go wrong uh, in, they will eventually do so, giving enough time. Uh, so make it easy to do the right thing and think about the encapsulation so the outsiders should not be able to manipulate an object state so that this object starts to misbehave and often these uh, misbehaviors or bugs uh, come at a later point in time so you have the uh, erroneous manipulation of the object in some place and then in some other place the problem shows and this means that it's super hard to find these source uh, root causes of the problem. Where is the bug actually located? It's uh, surprisingly often that it is not at all in the place where the, uh, the problem actually shows. So maybe the program crashes and you try to debug and the place where the program crashes is not at all where the actual uh, problem is located in the source code and this takes a, a huge amount of time and effort to uh, to sort out so think about encapsulation and uh, the major problem that we have is that we sometimes return or use references to objects that are internal that should be handled with uh, with care instead of just giving them to anyone uh, out there so uh, when you make these decisions try to think about them carefully and the uh, the thing is that it in some cases it is not a problem and it's more optimal to give a reference to an object instead of a copy so this is something that you really need to think about what can go wrong if I do this uh, and is it a problem then you need to think more about the encapsulation i hope you learned more about encapsulation and how to create a design that is easy to use